All right, uh, we can get started. So we're in Acts chapter 16. We saw uh, Paul and team in Philippi. We saw uh, the ministry to women. Uh, one particular um, very rich lady gets saved, Lydia. She hosts them. Then now we saw uh, how Paul cast out a spirit from a slave girl. Okay. Uh, now moving on to what happened, the reaction. See, we always expect when there is supernatural demonstration of God's power, some positive response is what we expect. Uh, even in Acts 3, that's what they expected. But what happened? They were uh, called in for interrogation. So unfortunate that uh, for the man who was uh, the master for the slave girl, uh, it was so sad that his, his spiritual eyes were still blind. And he was more worried about the financial loss that he had uh, as compared to the demonstration of God's power. Okay, So you see how, uh, how uh, things are and uh, uh, how unfortunate that uh, that master uh, couldn't understand what God was doing in the life of that slave girl. But thank God uh, that she was delivered. God did something uh, good for that, that slave girl and uh, she was free from that demon spirit. Uh, now, as a result okay, of that loss uh, the person experienced, uh, Paul and Silas are put into the prison. So it specifically says Paul and Silas. Now we may ask the question, where is Timothy? Where is uh, um, Luke? Uh, maybe they were outside on that day. They would have uh, told them, you guys wait here. We'll go and serve the Lord. We'll do the ministry. Or maybe they were in another you know, corner doing their work. Uh, but yeah, it was Paul and Silas who uh, actually ended up in the prison. So uh, I shared about how they were in a prison situation. They were in a tough situation uh, at this point. And, uh, you know, later on, Paul even writes to the, the Philippians. But even when he writes to the Philippians, uh, he's in prison. Okay. And uh, uh, so uh, Paul's attitude is something that we must we must understand. Okay. We must understand that being in a uh, uh, like a situation of persecution was not a deterrent for him to trust in God. So it really depends on our motives for, uh, you know, what we are expecting from the Lord. Uh, this was a tough situation. But at, at the end of the day, it was uh, knowing God as uh, almighty, worshipping him, honoring him, no matter what. Okay, and uh, uh, it's sort of pledging allegiance to um, uh, the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ. That was how Paul and uh, you know many of these early leaders, believers were. They were totally committed, totally committed. So while in Philippi, he's in the prison. When he writes to the Philippians, he's in the prison. Right? We'll see uh, later on uh, what kind of a prison situation that is. But still he writes, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So something uh, very unique happens later on uh, as they are in these inner prisons. But notice, uh, I didn't read out the, the passage for us, but there is one more detail in that passage that, uh, you know, they... The magistrates, the magistrates brought them uh, while putting them into the prison. But this is one statement which they make. And it's important for us to note it. So in verse 20, they say, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. So they now say that these men are Jews. And they are teaching customs contrary to the Romans, okay, but one thing or one piece of information which these magistrates have missed is Paul is a Roman citizen, okay. They have just assumed that he's a Jew, yes, but he's probably not a Roman citizen. So later we'll see that being a Roman citizen came along with uh, the rights, 
uh, that one could enjoy and it was not at all easy to be a roman citizen either you need to be born into that citizenship or you know pay a hefty price to get that citizenship so those who carried the roman citizenship were privileged okay and they could not be just put into the prison just treated uh, you know uh, just accused and treated badly all that was not acceptable but these magistrates um, and their oversight they just thought ha ah, ordinary jew let's put him in the prison because okay, that's a mistake which they made and uh, we'll see how that will affect them so now we said that paul and silas are in the prison okay i want us to uh, just visualize so i found a random picture now i don't know if theologically this picture is correct and all but the somewhat it depicts the what uh, paul and uh, you know silas would have looked like so let us try to project it for you okay there you go so the description they were beaten their feet were put in stocks so you see that they can't get out uh, they are handcuffed okay so can you imagine with me how their bodies must have felt can you imagine with me uh how afraid they could have uh, been at that point okay uh and what could be their like if, what what would we do if we found ourselves in this situation what would we what would be our self talk or our uh, prayer or what would be your self talk what would be your prayer okay god give me strength very nice okay god deliver us very good i think mostly our prayers would be uh, <laughs> prayers for uh, either for deliverance or maybe a little bit of complaint <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah honest very honest john um, i was also thinking maybe i don't know about myself or maybe i would have said why lord why me lord you know these kind of prayers happen because you find yourself in this tough situation what did you go to do serve the lord only no minister correctly by the power of the spirit now paul could have asked the question god i wanted to go to bithynia i told you but you told me to go to macedonia i came because you told me to come here and now i'm in the prison like what is this what is going on so we could have like we can have all these questions and complaints um in a situation like this but let's now see uh what is it that paul and silas are up to so even as you look at that picture there uh, maybe i will quickly read out to us from uh, verse 25 of act 16 but at midnight paul and silas were praying and singing hymns to god and the prisoners were listening to them suddenly there was a great earthquake so that found it so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed and the keeper of the prison awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm for we are all here then he called for a light ran in fell down trembling before paul and silas and he brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved so they said believe on the lord jesus christ and you will be saved you and your household then they spoke the word of the lord to him and to all who were in his house and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and immediately he and all his family were baptized 
Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food, food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. So in a way, what God has done is there is ministry waiting for Paul and Silas in the prison. When we are so committed to God and available, ministry doesn't stop. Even in the prison, ministry is continuing. But uh, the attitude or the heart condition of Paul and Silas was such that in this situation of being bound and being in pain, I just love uh, that one phrase, no, it says, but at midnight, okay, and a lot of preachers have used that uh, to preach sermons, but at midnight, Paul and Silas, it's a literal midnight, that's true, but we can also, uh, uh, you know, look at this as uh, sort of uh, in English, how we use uh, fig figure of speech, when we say midnight, it's a, it's a very dark time, uh, or a dark season of life, uh, so for Paul and Silas, it was literally midnight. And also in terms of their lives, it was sort of the midnight hour. But in our lives, midnight hours, what do we choose to do? That's the question. Paul and Silas amaze us because they were praying and singing hymns to God. Anybody, would you like to pull out your guitar and, you know, uh, strike the chord and sing one loud uh, worship song uh, in, in the prison at midnight. But that's what they were up to. They, their hearts were ready to worship God in any situation. And how did they do it? They did it so loudly that all the prisoners were listening to them. And thank God, you know, we uh, can also talk about the power of praise. When we engage in praise, um, you know, chains were broken. All were set free. Uh, we read that there was uh, something like an earthquake. The prison was shaken. And not only were they set free, but the Bible says in verse 26, everyone's chains were loosed. So we can also look at it in a spiritual sense because we do have uh, other passages in the Bible that talk about deliverance that comes through praise. When we praise God, there is a deliverance. Uh, like Jehoshaphat, remember? They, the army, like they went in with uh, worship. They went in with praise and automatically, you know, there was a, God set an ambush um, against the enemies and there was victory for Jehoshaphat. So praise, uh, when people walked, marched around the walls of Jericho, praising God, the walls came crashing down. So there are other passages that support what happened here, deliverance through praise. And so we can take it as yes, even in our lives, uh, in in the midnight hour, when we praise the Lord, there will be deliverance. Uh, and there's so much more to that. No, there was not just deliverance only for Paul and Silas. Everyone's chains were loosed. How amazing. Okay? Everyone was touched uh, by God's deliverance uh, at that time. And that was the way in which God really worked in the prison. Uh, and look at the attitude of Paul and Silas. They could have just run away, you know, like the moment our hands are free, the moment the stocks are gone, what would we do? Just get out of the prison immediately. But they didn't do that. Okay. Because they had compassion for the jailer. We read there that the jailer, when he understood this is what has happened, earthquake, everybody is free. So in that context, we must uh, understand that if a jailer is careless, right, then the authorities would uh, ask for that jailer to be killed. So he knew that uh, if, pri if prisoners have run away, he might as well kill himself because anyway, that's what is going to happen the next day. Okay, so he was going to kill himself. But Paul having compassion and great boldness, they didn't leave, they didn't run away like cowards uh, uh, in this situation, but they call out to, he calls out to the jailer and says, don't do yourself any harm. We're all here. Uh, and that in itself, right, uh, made this jailer change his heart or God touched him because of everything that had happened. And, uh, you know, directly, you remember how we saw in Acts chapter 2, they say, uh, what shall we do, brethren? They were cut to the heart. What shall we do, brethren? So in the same manner, he's asking, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And very similar to Cornelius and his household. Cornelius and his household were saved. Same way, in that night, 
we we see that uh, uh, the jailer along with this household they are saved uh, when you know uh, the team paul speaks the word of god to them and uh, they were baptized it says okay uh, same night they were immediately uh, they were baptized and also the jailer and his family were very um, uh, like they were they hosted paul and silas they were um, uh, generous to paul and silas they were hospitable so they gave them food and they also washed their stripes so they were hurt isn't it so that they even washed and they uh, treated paul and silas well or nicely okay so this is how the story ended so all this is happening in one night it's almost like a movie if somebody one of you intends to make a the, you know a, some a creative piece about praise uh, you can consider all in one night they put into the prison they praised they were uh, delivered but then they minister to the jailer the whole family is saved and uh, god moved powerfully even in the prison so the jailer and his family received ministry in the prison so paul and silas being in the prison was also not uh, uh, wasted in that sense right um, so we can trust god to uh, keep working through us wherever we go we can be a blessing to the people now let's see what happens now we are in the daytime the night has passed all these events have taken place and uh, uh, the news now reaches the uh, oh, oh uh, the magistrates they come and uh, they uh, seem to have made a decision uh, regarding these two prisoners and they tell these people the jailer uh, let those men go okay so that is their final conclusion the next day maybe the magistrates thought let's put them in the uh, prison let's treat them badly let's scare them a little bit intimidate them then they'll uh, you know quieten down and then they'll go back okay. uh, but the keeper or the jailer of the prison you know he reports uh, he comes back he tells paul and he says uh, uh, look the magistrates have sent to let you go uh, so you can now leave go ahead you know this is your opportunity this is your official opportunity last night um, you know you got a supernatural opportunity which you didn't take but now you have the official opportunity you guys can go but paul now uh, you know he is infuriated because of the way that he and silas have been treated uh, remember i mentioned one more detail was that he was a roman citizen so in verse 37 we see uh, Paul said to them, uh, they have beaten us openly, uh, uncondemned Romans, and have thrown us into prison. And now, do they put us out secretly? No, indeed. Let them come themselves and get us out. So he gets infuriated and he's asking for justice. He's asking for uh, justice because the law was not followed or the process was not followed. Uh, uh, he, he says that, see, you can put somebody in the prison if they are condemned accusation is not good enough right like accusation has to be interrogated to find out whether they are truly um, guilty or not and once they are condemned okay you can put them in the prison but what did the magistrates do straight away they put them in the inner prisons paul didn't like that he's like what is this is this a game they put us in the prison and now they're saying you go so uh let them come let them come themselves and uh, let them get us out okay but what happens now is now that paul has revealed he what did he say he said uncondemned romans the magistrates got scared they were afraid now that oh no we treated a roman like this we shouldn't have done that so they come to Paul and they plead, uh, they plead with both Paul and Silas uh, and then they bring them out. And then they say, you know, so sorry, we didn't know you were Romans and, you know, you got treated like this. Um, so uh, now with great apologies, uh, you know, we, we set you free. You can go now. Uh, you can go out of the city. 
So the finally, Paul and Silas, after the magistrates um, uh, apologize and set things right, they went out of the prison. And whose house do, will they go to? In Philippi, whose house do they have? Lydia. Yeah, they entered Lydia's house where uh, they had the brethren and they encouraged them and departed. So maybe they felt that it was time now for them to move on. So they left Philippi. Okay, uh, we move on to Acts chapter 17. Uh, any any thoughts, Any anything that you feel like discussing about? If so, we can pick it up. Otherwise, we can just keep going city by city. Okay, let's go on. So what did we see here in Philippi? Three people, okay, three people. Lydia, wealthy businesswoman. Then we said uh, slave girl. She's from a poorer section of society. But also uh, a jailer. A jailer is um, uh, someone that you can look at as maybe, you know, like an employee or uh, some places they may call like a blue collar worker. So every section of the society, wherever there's an open door, uh, they're making an impact and they're moving on. So now they will move on. To the next city. Now, our understanding is that maybe Luke, stay, Luke stayed back in Philippi and uh, Paul, Silas and Timothy moved on to the next place, which uh, the bigger city that they will come to will be Thessalonica. Now, they do pass through um, Amphipolis and Apollonia, but we don't read much about what exactly happened in those places. So, via those places they will come to Thessalonica in Acts chapter 17. So that's what we are going to discuss about over here. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's go on to Acts 17 and uh, read about Thessalonica. We can read all the way from verse 1 to verse 9. So anyone who would like to volunteer can go ahead and do it. Sorry. Yeah, let's see if there's anyone who would want to read here. Uh, I encourage our online audience, yeah, uh, online students, please. Act 17, mm -hmm. Vers verses 1 to 9. Now, when they had passed through uh, Aphipolis and Apon Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went in to them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, this Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and, the, and a great multitude of the devout Greek, Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded became envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the city, to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who, turn, who turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them, and these are all, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar. 
saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled, and they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city. When they had these things, when they had these things, so when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they left, they let them go. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lubega. Thank you so much for leading, uh, reading this uh, section. So we uh, now have them in uh, Thessalonica and uh, their, their usual strategy, uh, the way Paul used to go. He'll first go to the synagogue if there's an opportunity. So the same thing is happening. He's going there. He's ministering there. It says for three Sabbaths, so three weeks uh, he's there uh, and he's teaching from the scriptures he's talking about the lord jesus and uh, how you know uh, jesus he uh, had to suffer and uh, about jesus's resurrection uh, and uh, he preaches jesus christ to these people and uh, there was good ministry that took place because we understand that um, some of the people responded so they were persuaded and a great multitude of the devout greeks it says so the greek people a lot of them believed in jesus uh, so imagine with me when whenever we look at this team going to a city and then moving on uh, there's going to be a, a a set of people left behind in that city whom we will call as the church of that city uh, you understand because that's what it is, group of people who worship the Lord. So there is a church. Uh, you could say a church is planted now. A church is planted by the initial preaching of uh, Paul. And um, uh, these uh, devout Greeks, there are a multitude. Some uh, some of the Jews are persuaded. Uh, and a lot of women, it says a lot of women. So not a few of the leading women, meaning these leading women would have been influential women, rich women. Um, and uh, so there's a good uh, ministry that has taken place. And it seems like there's another host in Thessalonica. The host in Philippi was Lydia. But in Thessalonica, uh, it is um, Jason. And in Jason's house, uh, they seem to have some meetings going on. So now what happens is one such meeting is happening. And because people have started opposing uh, Paul, some Jews who were not uh, accepting of his message, started opposing Paul. So what they did is they went to Jason's house and they attacked it. And uh, uh, they wanted to bring these people out. Okay, So they couldn't find Paul. Uh, and uh, so uh, they just needed to show their power. Uh, they decided to get the owner of the house out and uh, treat him badly. So the Bible says they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city okay um and then you know they make their accusation uh, and that this jason is hosting this person who is contrary to the uh, the law of our land so they have this concept that when christ is preached or jesus is preached that paul is actually preaching uh, another rulership or another authority okay so that was their uh, their uh, perspective and uh, they felt that this is anti-government, what is going on. Uh, and uh, that is why they um, you know, uh, are trying to do all these things. So they drag out Jason and we are told that he, they collected a security, meaning poor Jason, <laughs> what did he want? He just wanted to have a, a, you know, a prayer meeting in his house. But uh, when they didn't find Paul, they brought him, dragged him out into um, before the, once again, dragged him out uh, and uh, some rulers uh, of the city uh, accusing them so that's what they did and uh, after they collected the security it was more like um, intimidating them again they just let them go but one detail that i want us to notice here is when they accused um, when when they spoke to jason and the brethren they said in verse 6 Okay, regarding Paul and uh, right now we have Paul and Silas and Timothy. Okay, regarding this team, they said, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. So it was meant to be a rude comment. 
so uh i don't know how they would have said it uh, in you know that the tone of their voice maybe they would have angrily shouted these who have turned the world upside down they have come here too something like that but uh isn't that a compliment what do you think they this isn't that a compliment these who have turned the world upside down have come here too I really think that uh, non-believers should also speak that of us in this generation. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it really shows us how impactful the ministry was of these men. That those who don't know much about them, and after all, Paul and team were there for three Sabbaths, right? Like some three weeks, four weeks is all they have spent. in Thessalonica and the comment of the people around of the you know authorities are these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also meaning they are so impactful uh in in what they are doing they are preaching this christ so there is a threat now that threat is uh that they may topple the government they may uh lead the hearts of the people astray okay uh, but yeah we know that that was not what uh, you know the team was up to they were preaching the lord jesus christ but in these tough situations uh, again what is the option left the option left is to just move on to the next place otherwise already in philippi they had that prison experience so maybe uh, god would have given them the peace to leave thessalonica just about 4 weeks okay go to the next place so in verse 10 we read then the brethren immediately sent paul and silas away by night to beria so the next station would be beria so what do we see about beria what do we what can we understand about this particular place uh, something special about the people of this place okay uh, they were people who love the word of god to the extent that they did not accept anything um at face value they always wanted to test it and ensure that what is being taught is correct so we read about them um uh, would would anyone like to read about the beria ministry verse 10 to verse 15 then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by by night to Berea when they arrived they went to into the synagogue of the Jews these were more fair minded minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so therefore many of them believed and also not a few of the greeks prominent women as well as men but when the jews from thessalonica learned that the word of god was preached by paul in beria they came there also and stirred up the clouds then immediately the brethren set paul away to go to the sea but both silas and timoth remained there so these were conducted so those who conducted for brought him to athens and receiving a command for silas and timothy to come to him with all speed they departed amen Yes, thank you, Lubega. Thank you for reading this passage as well. Um, so we see now that the brethren. Now again, this terminology when we read the word brethren, generally it means uh, it's believers. So the believers from Thessalonica came to uh, Berea because of the threat, sorry, which existed in Thessalonica. So when they arrived here, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. You see that like a common thing that's happening. Then. in verse 11 it says about them these were fair minded than those in thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so so uh, 
we can only imagine you know how diligent these people were that uh, not that they stopped any preacher from preaching uh, they would listen so they received with readiness they received the word but also they verified now think with me the person who was preaching to them is by far the best preacher one of the best preachers you know that that we can point to and say guys like wake up it's paul it's apostle paul like you don't know apostle paul you don't really have to check your bible to you know note he's written the, the large section of the the bible here but that was not a concern for these people uh, they were very happy to uh, check right they were happy to check uh, whether or not what was being spoken was uh, correct or accurate okay so such was the um, desire of of these people uh, today do we do that do we check the doctrine that we hear we should yeah we should so uh, it's a good thing to be open to listen to what people have to say uh, but is it really in the word of god mm, that is a responsibility that we carry and so we need to make sure that our foundations are always strong don't let any uh, you know wrong teaching come in don't let any inaccurate teaching uh, settle in in our hearts so these are all the responsibilities that we carry and um, so much more when we are uh, preaching or we are teaching the word of god to others to ensure that uh, you know it's in the word and uh, to the best of like we are uh, doing the accurate interpretation these are all concerns that uh, one must bear in mind so beria is known for the people there with hearts of readiness those who were uh, checking the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so and what was the kind of ministry that took place there very good ministry because uh, he says that uh, therefore many of them believed uh, and you know many greeks believed prominent women as well as men believed so there is a church plant okay so if you if we had a map and if paul had the habit of you know you pin it you pin that city and then you move on he would have put one star over there or something saying okay come on something has started here let's go to the next place uh, and uh, uh, then he moves on from there uh, but you see this thing of facing opposition it's happening everywhere people are rising up everywhere against paul so uh, the missionary journeys were not easy isn't it uh, yeah on the spiritual side um, there is fruit in the ministry and that's something to be um, joyful about maybe that gave paul and the team strength to keep moving on but on the other side persecution so hard to deal with persecution um and i don't know how they they could have um, you know really uh, continued with with all these things going on we don't know what people said about them what they accused them of and how they treated them uh, right uh, maybe some basic facilities which they they required was was taken away from them and uh, they struggled through their journey but they were willing to do it because they were so committed to the lord so opposition in every city every city and um, anyway they uh, now move on the uh, brethren send him away they say okay come on you go to the next place uh, so he goes to athens or athens however uh, that is pronounced and uh, silas and timothy they are uh, they leave them behind do you see a pattern whom did they leave behind in thessalon um, yeah philippi somebody was left behind in philippi to take care of the believers look okay and uh, now in um, beria they say you be there for some time but then you come come join us so uh, paul goes ahead of them and then they are supposed to come and join uh, paul in 
Athens. So now Paul is in this amazing city, Greece, you know, the capital city of Greece, Athens. And in those times, it was um, like, you know, one of those tourist destinations. If we have a, a dream place to go to, maybe people would have written down, oh, someday I want to visit Athens uh, because it was popular. It was the birthplace of um, philosophy uh, and, uh, you know, free thought, free thinking uh, and uh, really, really uh, a place, a sought after place where uh, people may have wanted to go sometime in their lives. So uh, from Beria, Paul travels to Athens, the capital city of the modern uh, you know, country of Greece. Uh, and uh, maybe he would have traveled about um, 270 miles. Uh, that's, that's what we understand. He also journeys by land. Uh, it would have been for something like 12 days of uh, traveling uh, and then, you know, three days by sea. And then he lands up in this place. So what about this place called as Athens? What are some features? Uh, Athens was named after a Greek goddess, okay? uh, Athena. And uh, uh, it was one of the oldest named cities in the world. Um, I'm reading out some facts for us. And then um, it was uh, a, a very long inhabited city. So it was not a new city. It was an old one, about 5,000 years old. So then uh, we can understand the culture that the city carried right because people have lived there for so long uh, and um, uh, Athens was also the home of uh, famous Greek philosophers many of us may have heard names like Socrates uh, you know Plato uh, uh, Demosthenes uh, these were all from Athens because they had that culture of uh, you know like thinking and um, philosophy, even Aristotle. Aristotle, have you heard of Aristotle? I think uh, many of us would have. So even he is a noted Greek philosopher and scientist uh, uh, who spent some time studying at Plato's academy in Athens. Uh, so there was much that Athens had to offer. That imagine somebody as as uh, great as Aristotle decides to come to Athens to spend time there. And it, it is said that, um, you know, he almost spent um, two decades. So there was so much to learn uh, in, in that city. Now, in this city, uh, you had, uh, uh, you know, because there's the learning culture, there were centers. There were centers where people used to go uh, to learn about science, to learn about art, uh, to even learn about philosophy. Uh, so in our today's uh, world, we have certain cities which are uh, cities with universities. People, students go. Like they go, hey, this university, Massachusetts, or, you know, I'm just saying some Oxford, uh, Harvard. So people, uh, it's, it's sought after and people want to go there to get educated, to get degrees and to come out uh, uh, as, um, you know, these um, uh, uh, very mature uh, prof uh, individuals, professionals and all of that. So uh, Athens has that image. Athens has that feel. Anyone would want to be there and learn from them. But at the time when Paul went, there were two uh, dominating philosophies that existed in Athens. Uh, these were, uh, one is known as Epicurean, Epicurean. The other is known as Stoicism. So Epicurean uh, was from the teachings of uh, uh, a person known as Epicurus. And <coughs> what he shared was, uh, a little complicated, okay. I still don't understand it, but uh, there is some philosophy which he had. He said, like, uh, death is not the end of all things. And um, uh, gods uh, were remote from the world. Like, gods don't care. That was another thought that he had. Okay, Death is not the end of this world. Gods are very impersonal. They, they are in their own world. We are in our own world. So, you know, that was his way of uh, thinking. Um, and uh, he also believed that uh, pleasure, 
pleasure is what uh, man needs so one's life must be spent uh, in pleasure so these are the key teachings of epicurus and uh, he established the philosophy which is known as epicurean thought or epicurean philosophy now uh, stoicism we talked about that right that was started by a man known as zeno uh, and he was lived at the same time as epicurus now stoi uh, stoicism had slightly different thoughts what were some of the key beliefs of stoicism he believed or it taught that everything was god and that god was a fiery spirit that gave men life okay uh, and that fiery spirit or that spark of um, that fiery spirit lived in uh, lived in man and uh, when uh, people die that spark or that fiery spirit returns back to god okay uh, and that everything that happens is in the will of god like everything good or bad that happens is in the uh, will of god uh, and the world is often disintegrated uh, and uh, started all over again so it's like cyclic uh, events of the world keep taking place now frankly every time i have to read these because i get confused <laughs> like what exactly are the philosophies of these men but we have an idea isn't it we have an idea where uh, 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 epicureanism is basically stating enjoy your life live a pleasurable life god is not concerned you know uh, the gods have their own uh, remote life and uh, uh, oh sorry and death is the end of all death is the end of all sorry i said death is not so death is the end of all so then if death is the end of all it makes sense because ultimately everyone is going to die then might as well enjoy life so that is epicureanism but stoicism is more about everything is god and uh, there is a fiery spirit that gives life to us and that spark is in everyone when a person dies that that spark will return back that life will return back so uh, people were accepting of every new interesting philosophy so maybe at that time this sounded very interesting and uh, they were happy they were happy to hear these things uh, but this is the time when paul goes to athens and uh, we will see so uh, it, it's like we'll close the scene right now okay i don't think we have sufficient time to discuss the ministry of paul so with this scene we'll close today so imagine with me he's gone to this famous city with universities uh, and these two existing um, thoughts right now and he is in athens he's waiting who is he waiting for he's gone by sea 3 days he's gone by road 12 days and he's waiting for somebody who's he waiting for is waiting for cyrus and timothy very good that's right so he's waiting for silas and timothy because he told them you be here in beria and then you know follow come quickly uh, so yeah so we are uh, here with paul waiting okay and so the scene closes here <laughs> we'll open the next scene next week uh all right uh, so let's uh, pray and close and uh, everyone i will be posting your assignment today okay your uh, first assignment and uh, you can actually uh, work on it uh, even the e learning students uh, not today but uh, shortly your uh, assignment will be up so you can begin to work on it and i'll try and give an early second assignment also so that you can uh, you know given your answers in time Uh, all right so let's uh, wrap up then unless there are some burning comments from you sure let's pray and close uh, who who would like to lead in prayer Shall we pray? Yes, please. Our Father and our God, we want to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity given to us to learn. Thank you for refilling back your daughter. Thank you, Lord, for all the students. Receive all the glory in the name of Jesus. 
My Father, my God, all that we have planned this morning, please, O oh Lord, help us to put them in practice to, for the purpose of serving your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you because we are wonderful, God. We commit every nation into your hands and we pray for Israel. My Father, my God, O oh Lord, prove yourself strong in the life of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Success. So nice to hear your voice. Um, God bless you all. Have a, a great weekend. Let's come together next week. Thank you.